Welcome to this lecture. We are going on to discuss sonographic anatomy of the gallbladder and biliary ducts. The gallbladder is a saccular structure that has a pear or teardrop shape in cross section. It is situated in the gallbladder fossa of the posterior right hepatic lobe, lateral to the second part of the duodenum, and anterior to the right kidney. The gallbladder is divided into four parts. Fundus, body, infundibulum, and neck as you can see in this image. The fundus is the rounded distal tip, which may project below the anterior inferior liver edge. It is the most anterior and inferior segment of the gallbladder. The body represents the largest central portion of the gallbladder. It may be in contact with the duodenum and hepatic flexure of the colon. The infundibulum or Hartmann's pouch is the focally enlarged segment between the body and the neck. The neck of the gallbladder lies between the body and the cystic duct and points toward the porta hepatis. The normal gallbladder lumen should contain bile and should not have any space occupying lesions. Normal bile appears anechoic and devoid of any internal echoes. As you can see in this ultrasound image, there is a large echogenic reflector with posterior dirty shadowing abutting the gallbladder body and neck. This is actually bowel gas adjacent to the gallbladder, and it could be mistaken for a stone or even gas in the gallbladder. The gallbladder abuts the duodenum and colon, and bowel gas should not be confused for true pathology. The gallbladder neck has a constant relationship to the main lobar fissure and the portal vein. The main lobar fissure connects the right portal vein to the gallbladder neck, and the fissure can be traced between these two anatomical structures. So the fissure can be a useful landmark for locating small contracted gallbladder or gallbladder that is completely filled with stones. The gallbladder can be variable in shape. Phrygian cap is the most common variant of gallbladder anatomy, occurring in 1 to 6% of the population. It is named after the headgear worn by ancient Greek slaves as a sign of liberation. This deformity is characterized by a fold or septum of the gallbladder between the body and fundus. This anatomical variant is of no clinical significance unless it is mistaken for a layer of stones or hyperplastic cholecystosis. Often many folds can be seen in the gallbladder neck. Folds are seen as echogenic structures adjacent to the gallbladder wall. The junctional fold is a fold between the body and the infundibulum of the gallbladder. This is a common anatomic variant seen on sonography. There are frequently one or more junctional folds in the gallbladder neck, and occasionally there are folds throughout the gallbladder. Septate gallbladder is a congenital variant where there may be a single or multiple septations in the gallbladder separating its lumen into segments. These segments communicate through small pores. Septations are rare and generally appear thinner than folds. These septations lead to stasis of bile and gallstone formation. On ultrasound, multiple communicating septations and locules are seen bridging the gallbladder lumen. A honeycomb gallbladder is used to describe the sonographic imaging appearance of a multiseptate gallbladder. Gallbladder duplication is a rare congenital anomaly, occurs in about 1 in 4,000 people. It is caused by incomplete revacualization of the primitive gallbladder, resulting in a persistent longitudinal septum that divides the gallbladder longitudinally. There are two separate gallbladder cavities, each one has its own cystic duct. 
These duplicated cystic ducts may enter the common duct separately or form a Y configuration before a common entrance. Most reported cases of gallbladder duplication have a clinical picture of cholecystitis, with gallstones in at least one of the gallbladders. Because of associated anatomical variations of the cystic duct and hepatic artery, this congenital anomaly is important for surgeons to know. Fasting of a minimum of six hours is required before evaluating the gallbladder. Because contracted gallbladder appears to have a thickened wall and can also obscure intraluminal or wall abnormalities. So, it is important to have a patient fasting as much as you can. The normal gallbladder wall is thin, smooth, and mildly echogenic. It measures 1 to 3 millimeters in thickness in the normal state. When measuring the gallbladder wall, we look at the anterior wall, and we measure it in long axis view, with the ultrasound beam perpendicular to gallbladder wall, as seen in this image. So, the normal gallbladder wall thickness should be equal or less than 3 millimeters. The upper limit of normal transverse diameter of the gallbladder is 4 centimeters. The length of normally distended gallbladder is variable, but generally does not exceed 12 centimeters. We consider high drops when gallbladder length is greater than 12 centimeters and width greater than 4 millimeters. The length and width of the gallbladder are measured in longitudinal and short axis views of the gallbladder, as demonstrated on these images. We are going on to discuss biliary ducts. The right and left hepatic ducts join to form the common hepatic duct. The common hepatic duct is located anterior to the right and main portal veins. The distal cystic duct joins the common hepatic duct posteriorly and forms the common bile duct. Here is a longitudinal view of the proximal common bile duct at the porta hepatis coursing anterior to the main portal vein and right hepatic artery. On transverse view, the appearance of this portal triad has been described as the Mickey Mouse sign. The portal vein represents Mickey's face, the common bile duct represents the right ear, and the hepatic artery represents the left ear. The common bile duct averages 6 to 7 centimeters in length. In talking about the common bile duct, we use the terms proximal and distal. Proximal refers to the segment of the duct in relative proximity to the liver. And distal refers to the more caudal segment of the duct in relative proximity to the bowel. Now the proximal duct as we said here is anterior to the portal vein and the distal duct can be further divided into suprapancreatic and intrapancreatic portions. The suprapancreatic portion being between the porta hepatis and head of the pancreas. This portion also can be considered the mid-common bile duct, and the intrapancreatic portion being within the pancreas. The distal common bile duct course along the posterior aspect of the pancreatic head. The right and left hepatic ducts also called the first order biliary branches and are normally seen on ultrasound. The second order branches can also normally seen on ultrasound. They are seen lying anterior to the portal veins. However, visualization of the third or higher order branches is abnormal. The normal diameter of the intrahepatic bile ducts proximal to the left and right hepatic duct should be less than 2 mm, or less than 40% of the diameter of the adjacent portal vein. The anteroposterior diameter of the common bile duct is measured in the long axis view of common bile duct, as depicted here in this image. 
The lumen is measured from inside of the near wall to the inside of the far wall. The measurements of common bile duct can be made at specific locations. It can be measured at the porta hepatis parallel to the main portal vein. It can be measured anterior to the right portal vein. It can be measured at the portion of the duct where the right hepatic artery crosses the common bile duct. Or at the suprapancreatic portion of duct, prior to the taper of the pancreatic head. And also can be measured at the largest visualized diameter. The common bile duct varies in diameter along its course, as we can see in this image here, we get increase in size distally towards the pancreatic head. When looking at common bile duct measurement, it is important to note that there is interobserver variability of 1 to 2 millimeters. And there is also respiratory variation, which needs to be taken in consideration, which was found to be greater than 1 millimeter. The upper normal limit for common bile duct diameter was found to be 6 mm in many studies. And there is increased diameter of common bile duct with age. And some studies found that in normal patients greater than 65 years old, the common bile duct can measure up to 10 mm. In post-cholecystectomy patients with preoperative normal common bile duct, it should not measure greater than 6 mm in diameter. So in conclusion, the majority of common bile duct diameter is less than 6 mm and duct diameter greater than 7 mm should elicit further investigations. Thank you very much for your attention.